Hi, this is Pete Lyons with Let's Play Salesforce, and in tonight's Einstein Analytics video, we're going to talk about sorting by any custom dimension in Einstein Analytics. Now, if we take a look at this chart, uh, I can see that I've got uh, values in beginning, end, and middle on the status field for my progress object. And the reason that they're sorted in that order is because Einstein Analytics does not know anything about my business process. It only knows how to visualize data for me. And uh, for me, I would expect to see these records displayed beginning, middle, end, but uh, there's no way to tell the engine that just by you know handing it the data from Salesforce and letting it figure it out on its own. Uh, so there's a couple of different approaches uh, that can can achieve this. Uh, there'll be a link in the description to an official Salesforce video recorded by Ricky over the summer. If you do want to just do this at a, on a dashboard level with a compare table, just spin it up real quick and be done with it. Uh, the solution that I'm going to be covering is more of a data flow based solution. Uh, so how are we going to tackle this? Well, first, we're going to jump into our data flow editor. I've got a very basic data flow right here. I'm going to get my progress records and then I'm going to register them. So the next thing I'm going to need to do is create a compute expression. I'm going to declare the source as get progress and I'm going to add a field. I'm going to call it sort status. And the way that this is going to work is basically we are going to prepend numerical values before our uh, pick list options. And you might say, oh, wait, 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 but I don't want to see 0, 01 beginning. I just want to see the word beginning. Well, don't worry about that. We'll, we'll get to that part. That is that is going to be a thing. Uh, but first, we need to get a field that's going to allow us to sort in the first place. So to do this, we need a case statement. And I always build out my case statements exactly like this first. I do case when A, then B, else C, and because it helps me from uh, to avoid simple mistakes. Like I often forget the word and, or I put commas between my when and then clauses because I feel that it's kind of a good point to take a breath before I continue the sentence. So uh, building in these placeholders, it's something I do with bindings as well. It really helps to avoid basic syntax errors that are gonna trip you up for hours on end. Uh, so then I'm actually gonna break this out into multiple segments and I'm gonna have my cases, or my case at the top, uh, my series of when thens, and my else end at the bottom. Uh, so first I need to build out just one of these. So case when status double under or double equals beginning then then zero one beginning. Uh, and it's also important to note that if this field is coming from a higher up object, like let's say that this progress was a child of account, and I was looking at account status, uh, this would fail uh, when the data flow went to ran or went to run. It would fail with the error uh, stream argument not supported outside of grouped projection. Uh, this is a, a SQL level error that we get on dashboards, makes a little bit more sense in that kind of a context. But uh, if you do ever see that error, it means that your field that includes a relation path needs to be enclosed in single quotes. So we'll get rid of that guy. Now we're gonna clone this uh, out for our different values. I like to do this in Excel. Uh, if I have a lot of these values, it makes it a lot easier. One thing to watch out for is Excel doesn't like double quotes. So usually I'll replace the double quotes with ZZZ and then uh, swap them back to quotes uh, in a text editor before I paste it in, in as, uh, before I paste it in as a binding. And for my end clause, I do want to have a catch all uh, in case a new value is input uh, at a future time that uh, the system wasn't ready for. Otherwise, I can also uh, fall back on the default value field within my compute expression. And the reason why we do want to make sure that one or both of these is populated uh, is let's say that I added a future stage of brunch that's you know before the, the, the middle but after the beginning. So if we create a new stage, yeah, we'll, we'll just call it brunch. Uh, it's not going to know what to do with that. We need to have some kind of fallback so that that data doesn't just get buried. So I'm going to say in that case, just you know, give me the actual status field as it existed. Uh, and if I wanted to be really fancy, I could even say give me a zero zero space and then the status field uh, so that it would be sorted up to the top and those uh, miscreant brunch values would be easily recognizable as uh, bad data that we would need to go to, well, not bad metadata actually, that we would need to go to our analytics admin to get corrected. 
so then I'm just going to save that guy. And now I'm going to change the source of my register to take my enriched progress node. Update and run my data flow. Hop over the monitor, spam that refresh button. And now it's ready, so we can go take a look. Uh, so back on that same dashboard, that field doesn't exist yet because the data flow uh, hadn't run when the dashboard was created. But I've got unfinished or uh, unsaved changes to this dashboard that I don't want to lose. So a uh, real cool tip here, I'm going to hit Control E, Control A, Control C, Control R, Control A, Control V, and then hit Done. So what did that do? That actually just went to edit mode of the dashboard, copied my JSON, reloaded the page, and pasted it back in for me so that my unsaved changes are preserved even though I reloaded my page. Uh, so now I should have access to that field. So if I go and I edit this chart, instead of status, I've got sort status. And I can see that I got my 01s, my 02s, and my 03s for beginning, middle, and end. And if I did add additional values in, they would show up as 00, zero whatever their value was, and they would be at the top. Uh, which is, you know, I always add the 0, 1 instead of just 1, because if you end up with 10, then it's going to be in the wrong order too. So important thing to know, you do always want to put a 0 in there. Uh, so, so wait, you say though, I thought you said we were going to get rid of that 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. Well, we are. So how are we going to do this? Well, I am in a Spring 19 org right now. You do still have this functionality prior to this release. So if you're watching this video, uh, you know, sometime within the first month or two after it's released, the uh, editor for this is going to be slightly different visually, but the same functionality is there. You want to explore the data set. Now notice I'm exploring the data set from here and not just going to the data set editor uh, or the lens editor from the dashboard level. I do need to do this directly from the data set. And I'm going to click on this fields button up here. And up until now, everything's the same that you're going to see in uh, winter 19 and prior. Uh, but when we get to here, it works a little bit differently. So I'm going to click on this sort status. I'm going to go to edit values. This screen's where it's different. We got a really nice improvement uh, to this screen in the new release. It's actually super usable now. Uh, and all I'm going to do is just edit the labels on these and get rid of those numbers. And notice how it's preserving that 0, 1 as an API value. And uh, we still uh, have that nice label that we want. We could also add in default colors right here. Uh, so we'll do that just for funsies to, to see some, some of the different variations there. Uh, and I won't choose the absolute brightest primary colors like I usually do, make it a little bit easier on the eyes. Uh, so now I just hit back here and I hit save down at the bottom, say yes. And then who was paying attention last time? It's control E, A, C, R, a V done and there we go beginning middle and end oh but where are my custom colors yeah XMD based custom colors are not supported on all visualization types but if I did want to see those colors I could just switch to a visualization that does support it look at that beginning middle end all in the colors I want hooray data set fields so there's two main gotchas to this approach. The first, as we discussed, is these miscreant brunch values that are not going to be automatically sorted. I did explore some different options to try to automate this process. Uh, and the long and short of it is, it's just way too much of a lift. You have to be able to you know, push via the APIs to uh, update your XMDs, create mapping tables in Salesforce. Uh, it's a big pain and you don't wanna do it. The second gotcha is something that we actually can deal with. And that is, well, what if I'm already using this status field in various places such as dashboards or possibly even data flows? Now, I don't wanna have to go back and update all of those various references. So what we need to do is get rid of that original status field, rename our sorted status to status, and then get rid of our sorted status field. So first, what I would do is create a slice node right after that enrich progress where we create our sorted status field. And I'm just gonna slice off the original status double underscore C. Then I would create a new compute expression now that that API name has been freed up. And I would create the status double underscore C field from my sort status. This is just a simple field clone. 
uh, then I don't want that sort status there anymore, so I would slice it off and then just register my data set as normal. So it took me three nodes to do this. If you think that we should have a rename transformation that just allows us to rename columns, uh, feel free to upvote this idea on the exchange that will be uh, linked in the description. Another thing to watch out for if you do this, make sure to do this before you go and update the XMD and create values for uh, sorted status. The reason why is because now that we have that sorted status field in our XMD, when we run the data flow like this, it's actually going to break our XMD because it's going to go to look for that sorted status field in our dimensions and it's not going to find it. And uh, so it's going to break our data flow and or it's going to break our XMD and revert any changes that we've made, not just to that field. It's going to wipe the whole slate clean so you always want to back up your XMD before you go and make uh, heavy modifications to your data flow uh, otherwise you're going to end up with an error like this which is uh, you know pretty pretty frustrating uh, even if you restore the data set it does not restore the XMD so any any modifications that you've made are going to be lost uh, be careful whenever removing fields from a data flow so uh, as long as you have that in mind and you know you create the you know you do this field overwrite before you modify your XMD you should be fine so that's all we've got for tonight I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something from it if you did please like subscribe hit me up on LinkedIn for stubborn determination and as always thanks for watching